I called the October meeting of the advisory board for Davenport Parks and Recreation in session. Roll call, please. Coiner. Here. Duffy. Here. Lemmick. Here. McBride. Absent. Peterson. Here. Shirts. Here. Okay. Spratt. Here. Thomas. Here. Trees. Here. Woods. Absent. We have a quorum, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, you received the uh, minutes of our September meeting, uh, and I would um, move approval of those minutes. Uh, with approval, do I have that? Make a motion to approve the minutes. A second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, action uh, from the standpoint of... Uh, I, oh, I'm hearing noises. Okay. Um, we do have public present. Um, welcome. Oh, yes, we do need to vote. Yes. It was there discussion. I missed the part of discussion and when it came in, so it's good. Um, discussion on those minutes or additional need before we place the vote. I see none. Um, those accepting the minutes as written signify aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes have been accepted. We do have, welcome, we do have uh, uh, citizens here that are um, welcome for public comment if they are present for that at this time. Uh, some comments. Uh, I'll certainly introduce myself. I'm Bob Bryant. I'm the former director of the Waxy River. Would you like to come up to the oh, podium? Okay. There's, we do have a mic system for you, sir. Okay. You probably can hear me. That's fine. I'm used yeah. to speaking to <laughs> Well, I'm Bob Bryant. I, I'm the one who established the Wapsi River Environmental Education Center out on the Wapsi with the Scott County Conservation Board. Mm -hmm. I was the um, director also for the Clinton County C Conservation Board. Uh, started in 1975 and left there in 1991 when I went to Scott County. I have a master's degree in recreation and park administration, and I'm mainly a biologist. I always say I'm the first rate of wild biologist, I'd rather been a botanist, and that's turned out by what I kind of specialize in. But I've always been around the city parks and the county park system and everything, and also, I'm on the Benton North Natural Resource Committee um, for them, and I do spend a lot of my time now just surveying parks, and I have served, I mean, I have surveyed Credit Island. I, that was several years ago, and I can't think of the gentleman who was with the city at the time had me do the work, but that is a very special place. And uh, I have ties to that before I even moved up here because I'm originally down around Kilikai. I went to high school at Warsaw, I've done bald eagle surveys and off and down the Mississippi River, but I also did it beyond Campbell's Island, Credit Island, and when they had the Battle of Credit Island, they didn't make it to St. Louis. They ended up at Warsaw and established Fort Henry there. And it was uh, the archaeologists didn't um, find where the fort was, but my high school buddy and, and we went to college together for two, two years at Killick, and uh, he is the one that discovered the fort. And so I've got that tie. So I'm more than, I love history, and especially the history of conservation in this area. And I'm also the one who won the Over Award this year, too. Well, and, congratulations on all of that. You have a rich background. So that's what, what's I'm an here. important point for us to hear from you today? I'm a biologist. Mm -hmm. I know this area and the natural areas as well as anybody does. Mm -hmm. and, and one reason I'm here is because Adriana McBride, uh, Adriana had asked me to be a mentor to her. Mm -hmm. And so we have spent a lot of time together and become very close friends. And she recommended I consider um, 
put my name in to serve on this advisory committee because of my background. And so I have got part of the application already filled out. But I, she told me that about the meeting, she sent me the stuff, and I said, I'd like to come in and just see how this, I think there, some of you might have met me already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if I keep going, we'll never end. Well, so. I'm glad to hear that you have an application uh, ready. We all have gone through that application process. So what I would suggest, if you need assistance in completing it, um, please call Clark and Rec, and they would certainly assist you. That's so. the biggest problem. I, there's not enough space in the box. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you having this expertise, so we'll look forward to receiving your nomination. Yes. There is one other thing I would mm -hmm. like to mention, that I might be becoming, um, I am a member of the Plus 60 group. Mm -hmm. And I have brought up to them about more activities outdoors and stuff. Mm -hmm. And my long range goal is to establish the Senior Conservation Corps in this area because seniors are the most underutilized group in this area for restoration work. And so that's one thing is a big topic I'm talking with them on right now. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you and enjoy um, you. our time today. And um, hopefully you come back with, you know, a sense of what we're about. <laughs> we have a pretty busy uh, schedule today. And so thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, we do have on our agenda some unfinished business, and that is under our election of officers, and we do have one other uh, appointment to fill, and that is the Riverfront Improvement Commission liaison. And this is an election process that we will be following, and so what we would like to do is um, start a nomination process, and in doing that, uh, we... All of us have uh, an opportunity to nominate others or ourselves, and the uh, component is the following. Um, we will say in our nomination process, I vote in the name of the nominee for the position of, and in this case it would be Improvement Commission Liaison. And following that, uh, there must be a second for that particular uh, nomination. And so we will do that process until all nominees are identified, and then we'll move on to uh, comments and then the actual voting. So at this time, we'll start the nomination process. Yes, Maureen? I'd like to nominate myself for the position of the liaison. Okay. And I did that last time, but it... <laughs> <laughs> we had communication, yeah. lots of that. <laughs> we do have a quorum. Oh, yes. Well, so. uh, the reason I think the reason you want that. Let's let's uh, get a second first, I and then we'll. I served in that position some years ago. Okay. But at that time, it was um, uh, our, our at that time our. The, and about Arsenic, just casually said at the end of the meeting, oh, by the way, they want a liaison. He said, would you do that? <laughs> okay. And uh, so I did that. I was never on the, the Parks and Rec was never on the agenda. I didn't miss a single meeting. And I listened to everything they said. If they said something about Parks, and it was something I felt I could communicate about. I did, but otherwise they never called on me. And then when I came back to the Parks and Rec, they didn't ask me for what was going on down there. So that's the way it was. And I thought, sounds like, after listening to Mike, that they have changed their agenda. So I'd be really interested in changing it the right way. <laughs> well, that's a great comment, and I think we have all um, heard that. I would entertain a second. For I'll motion. second that motion. Thank you. 
other nominations at this time? Yes. Um, Richard. How do we... <laughs> I'm trying to phrase it correctly here. I would like to nominate Tegan Trees for the uh, liaison position if she's interested. Did I say it correctly? If I second myself, does that indicate interest? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'd like to second that. Thank you, Jerry. Second, yes. Okay. Other nominations? Hearing, hearing none, <laughs> we have two nominations for the um, liaison position for Riverfront Improvement Commission. Maureen Lemick and Tegan Trees. Um, what we'd like to entertain now from our nominees are uh, an overview of their uh, reasons for have, having interest or wanting to uh, pursue that position. Maureen clearly stated the historical background that she has. Any other things? Okay. Um, Why don't we? Okay. Maureen, thank you for your, you know, your rationale for your interest in the position. I'll ask Tegan to share some information too before we vote. Uh, sure. I um, you know, gladly accept my responsibility with anything regarding the parks. Um, Riverfront improvement is something that I am interested in. I can't uh, hear you. Oh, and my. Not is on. Or am I just not close enough? Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but I have a particular interest because of my role on the um, now suspended Main Street Landing project. Um, you know, having those um, two perspectives in mind, um, they're related in obvious ways, and I would be interested in filling the liaison position. Great. Thank you very much. Um, are we? ready for our vote. This will be a voice vote, and our secretary will call with your request. Coiner? Oh. Who are we voting for? I mean, how? Okay, yeah, we need to vote first. Um, our first application was Maureen, so we'll vote. We go, um, I will call names, and then Jerry will say if he wants um, yeah, Maureen I thought it would be trees. a joint. Okay, whatever you have chosen as a candidate, we have two. Yes. Correct. So, Jerry, um, you're I'd like to uh, nominate Tegan Trees. Okay. This is the roll call. I, 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 I don't understand what we're doing here. <laughs> okay, so the format that we're voting in today will be I vote, insert name, for Riverfront Improvement Commission liaison. We already did that. That it, that's you nominated. Oh, you nominated first. This is the official voting. Now I say I vote. I vote trees for riverfront improvement. <laughs> Thank you. I vote trees for riverfront improvement okay. position. Okay, Duffy. I vote Marie for riverfront improvement. Was that? I'm sorry. Was that Marie? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Lamec? Maureen, you may place your vote. Well, if you vote for yourself, state it now. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should be honest and vote for myself. All right. Uh, Peterson. I vote for uh, trees for uh, the position of Riverfront Improvement Commission liaison. Shirts? I vote for trees for Riverfront Commission liaison. Spratt, I vote Maureen for the position of Riverfront Improvement Commission liaison. Thomas? Um, I vote for trees for the position of liaison. And trees. <laughs> uh, I vote taking trees for Riverfront Improvement Liaison. Um, trees has the vote for 
Department for Improvement Commission liaison. Thank that you, everyone. Yes. So congratulations, and we'll look forward to reports on what is happening there. Thank you. Moving on to new business, uh, we do have a presentation by Kim Mills uh, for the Tobacco Free Parks Initiative. Um, I approached the advisory board last year and we had discussed a tobacco-free, nicotine-free uh, policy initiative. Uh, now in the age of COVID, um, it seemed to me that this was probably a good time to address this issue again. Uh, last year, I think, well, we've had a turnover in city council members, uh, of course a new mayor, and I was hoping that perhaps the advisory board might still be in favor. I did um, create some packets about why policies are effective, the importance of creating policies. I also brought some information on the um, policies that have already happened across the state of Iowa. That list is growing, it's becoming the new trend. Part of the reason for that is role modeling for young people. So we're showing them these social norms are not the same as they used to be. Mm -hmm. We that we're trying to be helping us. Um, so I'm here to answer any questions. I did also bring some information that talks about the core correlation between COVID-19 and tobacco use and the negative effects that tobacco use has on, on a person's lungs. So I'd like to give you each one of those. And answer any questions you might have. Now, in, of course, this is what I'm passionate about is helping people be tobacco-free, nicotine-free, um, and so whenever creating a policy, we always try to support people to help them quit. Anyone who's interested in quitting, be it young people, there's now free resources mm -hmm. that, to help even young people out who have started vaping. Um, it's free confidential help. Um, of course, for adults, there's always Quit Line Iowa, and that's what we try to have people utilize since it's a free service and they can call them anytime they're ready to quit. So in connection with ever creating a policy, we try to help people in becoming healthier. Does anyone have any questions for me? Yes. For example, if you have no smoking in a city park, why is it okay to vape? Well, that's why we encourage you to create a nicotine-free, tobacco-free policy because it's hard for little kids to distinguish between someone who's vaping and someone who's smoking. You see that puff of smoke. So th to me, the best course is just that you eliminate all of that in the parks. And through the Iowa Department of Public Health, I can get free signage for the parks that are created to be tobacco-free, nicotine-free. So the hope is when you have the signs posted that people see it and people respect that. In Bettendorf, for example, you, you can't smoke in the park, but they allow vaping. And I disagree with that. I, <laughs> I, I think, uh, I, think it, I, I read the article mm -hmm. in the ordinance that the city had put together. Mm -hmm that it does say that there, it includes vaping. It does, okay. I don't know, I never worked. I, I read the whole thing here and, and it, it, it eliminates, if it's passed, it, it passed everything. Electronic smoking devices. Yes. It, you know, the wording can be different, but it's all supposed to be the same umbrella. Whether it's con called vaping, electronic nicotine delivery systems, e-cigarettes, it's supposed to be the same thing. Even chewing, everything. Yeah, I'll be thanking for Well, that would uh, be up to city council. Chad, did you want to chime in? 
Yeah, I, was, I had my call button. So um, just to give a little background and a refresher, if, if you recall, it, Kim came here, I believe it was the fall of 2018. It was like one of my first meetings. Um, and at that time, we proposed a, a nicotine tobacco-free policy similar to what we're doing now. Um, in order for it to move forward on council, there has to be two members of council or the mayor to put it on the agenda. At that time, it didn't get any support, so it just sort of stalled out there. But you guys as a body had approved that um, to go forward to council for discussion. Um, recently, Kim reached out, saw the opportunity with the significant change in council to revisit it and, and actually uh, reached out directly via email to uh, the current sitting council and got some favorable response back. So there is interest at the council level to have a discussion on this topic again. Um, so we wanted to bring it back in front of you guys though to have that discussion um, so council knows where the park advisory board sits on this issue. Um, what you, so I went so far as with Kim's help to draft an ordinance resolution change, and that's what's in your packet. Now, this is certainly a draft. It's watermark draft. Um, it, it's being reviewed by our city attorney's office. I haven't heard back anything. So this is just sort of the starting point, but it's based off of one of the examples Kim's, Kim provided, and that's the ordinance change that the city of Long Grove did. Um, and this is, this is the top. So this is a full blown ordinance change with civil penalties. If there's infractions and it gives police the, um, another tool to interact or use, um, when they are in the parks or, and so on and so forth. Now it'll also be monitored by our staff, you know, and through the signage, um, but it does have a civil penalty portion of it. Um, I think last time when we talked, we were talking a little bit less, more of a proclamation or a, um, um, resolution. a resolution, just saying, hey, we supported tobacco-free policy, but there was no actual ordinance change included at that time that would have included the penalty portion of um, that. So that's sort of where we are with discussion with you guys. Um, and it'll, you know, assuming that, um, um, this park advisory board still has interest in, in pursuing this even council can still obviously discuss it either way. Um, but it will more likely be on the council agenda here, maybe in the second, as early as the second cycle in October, maybe early November, um, for discussion. So they they, they actually have a first and a second to bring it on the agenda. So. Yeah. I, I still support this. Um, I remember I was on the committee with Tim early. One thing that came up was people are saying, well, are we going to have the police going around checking? I don't think it's, uh, we're not going to have the police going around the Little League games writing tickets. I don't think we need to worry about that, but it's, it gives them something. If there's a problem, it gives the police or whoever something to say that, hey, it's in the ordinance, you can't do this. So as far as having Big Brother looking at everybody, just, you know, no. I just wanted to, I know that's going to come up. You know, people are going to say that. So anyway, I, I, I support this. Uh, yeah, so my first question is, what is being asked of us? Is it our, just our support, or do you need us to say, yes, we want an ordinance, or, or what are we being asked for? So um, it could go either way, really. It could be as simple as a motion to support a policy and then go from there. You could leave it broad. You could go as specific as, hey, yeah, we support a full ordinance change with civil penalty. Um, it's really up to you guys to have that discussion if anybody puts forth a motion um, supporting I, something more. I, um, with Richard, I also support, but I do think there are some things like golf courses that I think came up the last time we talked that we may want to consider. Chad is raising. Sorry, yeah. Um, that is one thing that we've talked about would be excluded because um, okay. that's how it was. Yeah. yeah um, um, Golf and then courses just, would be excluded. Since it is an ordinance and there's penalty, I assume that like an officer would have discretion to give a warning before they give a first fine. Okay, thank you. That's it. Jerry? 
Uh, I did read that there uh, in that ordinance that you had written up that the golf courses were included in that. So it, it, we need to do something with that. But I do support pushing this thing forward. And so I make a motion that we uh, send this on up to the council. I second that motion, but I don't think you make any exceptions for a golf course. If it's citywide, it's citywide, including the golf course. I agree, I agree with uh, Duffy there. I think, um, I don't know, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. She needs to be all around. Kids go to golf courses too, and they see them, oh, it's okay, because they're golfing. I don't know. If we're going to do it, we're going to. We need to, all across the board, not make any exceptions to any parks. Jerry? Uh, I'm not going to disagree with that um, because it should be all parks. But although uh, I think you'll find that once we put this thing through uh, and everybody is under the awareness of no smoking or any of these things in the parks, whether it's in the golf courses, and I play a lot of golf, and I don't see many guys out there doing that anymore. I, so I don't think it would hurt if, if we did that. I said no first, but um, I'm changing my mind a little bit of that. I, I tend to move to the um, uh, supporting a policy. I still think there's too much detail in the enforcement component that is suggested. Two of the questions that I had in mind is, and Chad answered one of those, who will be ensuring that monitoring takes place and it will be the responsibility of Parks and Rec. But the second is in regard to um, the warnings. And if we look at that, how is that going to be monitored to um, enforce uh, further violations occurring that would lead to the fines. So um, that sounds real harsh. I think I'm hearing that word that that um, there's still kind of this wavy action of how much to enforce versus still trying to get the message out. So I would support uh, the concept, but I, I think we need to go back to a general support of the policy, and there are other ways that we can initiate the um, introduction of that once again. We're quiet all of we a sudden. We are quiet. Yes. Well, I mean, a resolution would probably fit that. Um, the ordinance that is being proposed is the cream of the crop. I mean, that's probably um, the best well-written policy that we have in Scott County as our ordinance that is uh, in Scott County that's, that's been passed. Uh, there are options for resolutions, um, which would not have the element of uh, enforcement as far as Issuing, issuing citations or anything. So that's, again, a group discussion. And um, So we had a taking. motion by Jerry to support a policy, or I think we need, you guys need to probably narrow that down and be specific whether it's support for just a policy, support for a res the resolution with civil, pin you know, um, or to what level is this board wanting to, or it could be very, I know I'm back and forth on this, but you could just have a very, yes, we're in favor of something <laughs> and let council have that discussion and see where they, I mean, ultimately council will set the um, final or have the final discussion on the topic, so. Um. So I would like to motion for a general support from the Parks and Advisory Board for a tobacco ban and the parks, trails, and other things outlined in the draft, and leave it to council's discretion to decide what the terms of that ordinance are. Thank you. Do we have a second for that? I second it. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I need to do it. 
Can somebody rephrase or repeat that? <laughs> I will gladly try to restate what I said. Um, I motion for um, a support of a um, general tobacco ban um, ordinance, nicotine. I don't know what, what's the appropriate. Tobacco-free, nicotine-free ordinance. Tobacco-free, nicotine-free ordinance um, with support from the Parks and Advisory Board with discretion for the specifics of the ordinance left to City Council. We had, we had a second by Jerry. Is that still good? Or Yes, good. second. Okay. <laughs> Further discussion before we vote? Jerry? Oh. Jerry? <laughs> I'm just trying to turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have a trouble pushing buttons. Okay, I'm looking. Thank you. Steve? To be clear, this is a tobacco free throughout the city parks. Tobacco free, Motion. nicotine free parks, including golf courses. Is that what you're? Yes, tobacco free, nicotine free, okay. including the public golf courses. I'm, I'm on board. Other discussion before we vote? Do we have it written officially? <laughs> Does everybody remember it or do we need to repeat it one more time? Are we good? I hear good. Um, is it show of hands or a roll call? What's your request? Why don't we do general? It's going to be a roll call vote um, since we are passing this recommendation on to council. I'm going to need uh, solid numbers to report. Okay. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Coiner. Yes. Duffy. Yes. Lemick. Maureen. Aye. Um, Peterson. Yes. Shirts. Yes. Uh, Spratt, yes. Thomas. Yes. And Treat. Yes. Okay. The, the motion had passed. Thank you. Moving on. Thank you, Kim, Thank you. for the presentation. Thank you for all the additional materials that we can read again at our leisure. <laughs> Thank you. It would be, um, uh, just in a general comment, how will we know how this progresses? Is this going to be uh, shared at next council meetings? Or so that my question, why I'm triggering that is, if the ordinance comes forward, we would have an opportunity to voice that um, at the city council meeting that would be addressing it, correct? Correct. So anything that comes on council always starts with the committee of the whole. So okay. when that gets on that cycle, that first committee of the whole, I'll send an email out to all of you just to make you aware it's on there. And then we would so have maybe. So you have the first committee of the whole. There's generally three readings. Um, it goes through three cycles. So um, you, there's plenty of opportunity for opinion and, and yeah. to engage with council and comment. And I know we would have an opportunity to download that packet if we chose to on the internet when we know so we could read it completely and respond at hearings. And just so you know, I will offer to be at any meetings that they'll allow me at to mm -hmm. answer any yeah. questions so I can always report back to this group also. So thank you. You bet. I think we have a track now on which to follow that. Um, now moving on to another important component, we're in the budget process again, and so Chad has a budget review presentation for us. You have a packet, and it's also on the screen. Yep. So um, this sort of morphed into a little bit beyond the uh, budget presentation. It, it, I'm going to go over basically our department and give a refresher uh, on our core competency items, um, what we do, frequently asked questions we get, as well as an update on the FY20 budget. Um, 
the actuals the year end because we are in the process. We've started the FY21 planning or FY22, excuse me, um, planning process. And um, it's good just opportunity to catch you up to speed, especially with uh, COVID and how that's impacted our operations and, and our bottom line. Um, so uh, with that, and, and this is also a preview, we are doing these department wide um, with city council because of uh, the turnover at city council, um, city administrator Spiegel thought it'd be good to sort of have departments give an update and a refresher on what we do so they have an idea of, of everything and uh, each department does. So. Uh, you're getting a little bit early preview of a portion of ours. Um, ours is going to be uh, at a special meeting next Monday. I get to present this to council. So with that, the basics, leadership, obviously, Chad Dyson, I'm your director. You all know that, as well as uh, our, our administrative assistant, Jessica Rhodes. Um, so there's our general contact information. We are comprised of obviously three divisions. Uh, we have our parks operations divisions led by Betsy Tubbs, our senior parks manager. Ta-da. Uh, and then Teresa Hallman, our senior recreation manager. And then Troy Evans, our superintendent of revenue facilities. And then you guys, some of this stuff you guys are very aware of. Um, so budget basics. Generally, when we look at our budget, our operating budget, and there, just to diverge a little bit real quick, we have what's our operating budget. So this is basically our, our general fund and revenues for services. Um, your general fund tax dollars that support our department are in this. And this goes to basically our day-to-day -day operations, right? We're talking our employee expenses, our supplies and services, our capital outlay and allocated expenses. The other component is CIP, you'll hear me reference, and that's our capital improvement program. That's the uh, debt service, generally bond issued uh, large capital projects that gets funded. Uh, within the general fund of the city is the debt service fund. So your taxes do go towards paying, you know, the debt service on those bonds, but that's how we fund um, our big projects, our major projects, generally anything over 50,000 is, is sort of the threshold, but there's uh, the park development fund where you guys rate projects. That's part of the CIP every year. Um, Jersey farms park that's under construction. That's part of, um, the CIP. So, but I wanted to really talk this realm about operations, um, because we've, we've been pretty flat. And what I mean by flat is, We've maintained our operations over the last three to four years um, with little, little increase, um, general growth of, you know, two to three percent in expenses. And that's usually coupled with the tax base growth of the community and um, accounts for increases, primarily employee expenses, increases to wages or insurance coverage, that type of stuff, uh, cost of living increases. Um, the so employee expenses you will see in the FY21 uh, budget there was a little bit of a uh, more of a jump that year than normal and that's because we recently went through a pay banding exercise um, and, and with that we basically looked at all our part-time seasonal positions and, and then adjusted their salaries um, based on um, area rates um, different uh, job duties. We restructured some of their job descriptions and things like that just because it hadn't been done. And it also created a grade level and a step level for employees that are returning to us to get increases on an annual basis based on uh, length of service with us. And, and that that helps. We never had that really in place and that'll help in our, um, our um, what's the word? Recruitment and our retainage thank you betsy See, our our retainage of employees um so one thing to note on this is we are going even though we're we're relatively flat and we've been we've been told we are going to look at at least in the parks op side um and because of the growth in the riverfront parks and the level of maintenance and the issues of flooding at credit island 
those areas really take a lot of our resources um, from Betsy's staff and her crew at times. Um, we are gonna actually ask for an increase of five seasonal positions to support that. Um, when we had a golf course at Credit Island, and this is, predates me obviously, but we had a full maintenance crew that sort of maintained the island. When we had our decrement years in the in the mid two thousands, and the golf course went away, so did that crew. And and what we've seen is a challenge in trying to keep Credit Island uh, maintained, particularly with the flooding. You know, if we had these additional positions, we would have been able to bring the island back quicker. Um, and we just feel with the importance of the riverfront and the emphasis that council is putting on uh, Main Street Landing and LeClaire Park and our other riverfront features and engaging in the flood discussions, this is an opportune time to um, put that request in. So we have a, a plan to ask for some additional positions in the um, park operations area. Um, I wanted to touch a little bit on supplies and services has stayed flat. Um, the capital outlay. So this area is, is funded primarily through local option sales tax. And this is one fund that even though we're staying flat, I'm not confident that our FY22 budget will be funded as that amount just because this is one fund for the city that COVID has, has had an impact on a little bit. Not as much as hotel motel taxes, but uh, local option sales tax, there's been a little bit of a dip uh, just based on the economy and that sort of flows with the economic conditions of the country and the state. Allocated expenses, these are all just our internal charges. So we have support departments like IT, uh, that does all our computers and our, our peripherals and all that sort of stuff. Risk management, our insurance, that type of stuff. So this is just all internal depreciation on our assets um, get funded in that. And it, it stays, it grows a little bit here and there as we add uh, additional assets. Um, the key thing I also wanted to bring up is on the personnel level. So we've stayed relatively flat and I keep saying that, but we have added amenities, we have replaced playgrounds, we're bringing new parks online, we're doing new development on the riverfront, all without an increase in personnel. And actually you see our FTEs have gone down a little bit. Um, so this is a point of contention that I have to really try to challenge to see if we can return to some level of pre-decrement time um, to get more, because we're, we are doing more with less. I mean, um, and what I'm really hoping is that when we get our benchmark data from our um, our master planning process and, and like communities comparison, we'll sort of really see um, some real significant differences from our community as far as, as, as some funding levels compared to other like communities. So. Um, that is really sort of the challenge for Betsy and Troy and, and Teresa's crews um, to continue to provide the services with little to no growth. Um, so when I always talk about you guys as our advocates and liaisons and, and, and to, to counsel who, you know, set priorities, um, this is sort of our need, right? We need to have some additional maintenance staffing, um, primarily in the parks uh, and golf um, uh, to continue, not only continue, but to exceed and make our parks uh, as welcoming as possible. Uh, and for a progressive community to attract and retain, you know, new businesses and, and, and new families to the community and to not only, and to benefit the families that have lived here for many years, um, and keeping their park system, you know, top notch. So I'll pause there for a second. If anybody has sort of financial questions or budgets questions. Jerry. Uh, I just want to say, thanks. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that'll make such a big difference mm -hmm. if we continue to, to go that direction. 
And um, not only that, but the usage of our parks will be a lot more. Um, just to throw one more thing in as far as Credit Island, what I'd like to see too is, is I'd like to see a hose go across the, the lane of that park to see how many people go in and out of there monthly. Yeah. All we, year round. Yeah. We done, we've done traffic counts, but it's been a while. But we, yeah. That's I'd like to see that. you can do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Great job. Seeing no one else, I'll move on. Uh, I oh. think Steve has oh, sorry. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> uh, what's the head count that you had at Credit Island at one time that took care of that golf course and so forth? How many people would have that would that mean? Just two? Let me see those two, fingers no, again. Two two full time and three seasonal. So not only did we have seasonal, we actually had two full-time year-round employees on the, maintaining the island. So now we're looking at just trying to get five seasonals, uh, not full-time at this point, but yeah. That, that would make a difference. Okay. Um, any other? Okay. The one other thing... Um, and it's not reflected in the budget basic screen, um, and that is River's Edge. Um, of the probably most impacted revenue facility where golf has actually exceeded and, and benefited from, from COVID to a certain degree with rounds being up 6,000 rounds this year because people want to get out and do something. Uh, the flooding and and... COVID have significantly impacted River's Edge the opposite way. So revenues are nearly half of what they've been. We haven't been able to do public skates. We haven't, we've had limited time. I mean, we're, we're open now and we're doing more ice rentals for hockey, but it's still sort of limited. Um, along with an aging facility that the infrastructure, the, the costs, the utilities continue to rise, the, um, the, the um uh no betsy you went no uh <laughs> <laughs> the utilities and then the 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 professional services the cost of maintenance so we we have lots of repair issues with the coolant system and we need a roof that needs to be replaced so we we're sort of at a crossroads and there'll be you'll see some conversations at, through the budget process um with council on sort of the future of River's Edge. I'm just sort of giving you a, a preview of, of potential discussions because remember the city acquired that about 10 years ago and, and it was already a 15 year old facility. So it's at 25 years and it still has its original mechanical equipment as far as the coolant system and, and it's sort of past its useful life. Um, there's definitely a demand for ice in the Quad Cities, and we are the only ice rink, so we play a vital role in providing that. The only other one is Tax Slayer, but that has limited public access. Um, so we are the sort of market for that. Uh, the, the Where the revenue has declined, and, and we, we think it's correlated to the impact of the TBK bank facility coming online, and that's our turf arena. So we, we've lost significant um, league teams for soccer um, that are, are going to that facility. Typically, what we'd like to do is give it a couple of years and see if it rebounds, you know, because sometimes the newness factor in a new facility, but at the end of the day, they come back to, to what they grew up with and loved and, and, and our, our, I'm confident our price point is significant to where we can offer a similar service, if not better service for a, a lower cost than what TBK is doing. But um, the, the turf arena discussion will really be, you know, something that we have and that's whether or not we invest capital to make that facility work, maybe renovate the turf to be more hardcore, uh, public access, um, or do we add a second sheet of ice um, to really go full-blown hockey? So these are all just ideas staff is putting together, um, you know, not necessarily recommendations, but data and, and, and prospects on, and it'll be part of the, I'm sure, the um, budget discussions as we move forward. Um, so that's just sort of an awareness thing as far as River's Edge and 
Mm -hmm. Questions uh, on that? Are, are the uh, Friends of Credit Island still as active as they have been in the past? Um, their leadership is still active. Oh. I think um, their numbers as a whole may not be as active as they used, but Bob Peppers, yeah. we're still... Yeah. Have weekly conversations with Bob. He is at it as ever. Um, they aren't doing their bingo, though. I know he shut that down due to uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think they're doing as many activities and volunteerism on the island as they have in the past. But Alderman Dunn and, and Bob, um, and then they've had some Boy Scout groups this summer that have helped out was some of the cleanup from the derecho and other things down on the island. So they're pretty active in that regard. Jerry? Um, hockey. I never played hockey in my whole entire life, but do we have hockey leagues down there? And yeah. Can we expand that? I mean, just like what you said before earlier, that maybe that other side and yep. turn that into ice too as well? So. Yeah, there, there's definitely an opportunity. The, the hockey still seems to be very relevant in the Quad Cities. Um, we don't directly run leagues, but we rent ice to the Hockey Association that, that runs leagues and adult leagues and that type of stuff. We do do learn to skate uh, programming and then open skate. Um, the key with that is, is there enough demand to warrant that second sheet of ice? We think there is. Um, the question though, we would need to significantly, we would have to replace this, the mechanical system to do that, to convert that to another sheet of ice. And, and that's where the capital cost, cause that's probably a $1.2 million, um, replacement project. So that's where the discussions will be had, right? Do we invest in capital to upgrade the facility and get it up, you know, to where it needs to be to support these activities and, and is that a priority of, of councils to do so? I don't know if it's about roller skating or not, but I don't know if that'd be a good thing either. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, we haven't, I'm not aware of any requests for yeah. roller skating. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not for me. Okay. I'm... Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> okay, moving on. So. This is just a brief overview of basically a refresher on what our core services are. Park operations, so this is Betsy and her team. You know, they do all the structural custodial mowing, snow removal, and special projects as they relate to parks. Um, the horticultural team, the team of, uh, of three um, based out of Vandeveer are also under Betsy. So they obviously maintain primarily Vandeveer, but then they also are responsible for all our uh, planter beds and, and flowers and everything else throughout the community. Our, our safety um, uh, risk person is based out of uh, Park Ops and uh, the ambassador program that we run in the summer um, operates under safety. And then special events. So one thing I, I want to sort of touch on is we play a pretty integral role in, in special event operations in the community, particularly on the riverfront. So there, there's a pretty robust um, application process that touches multiple departments in the city. Um, we are one of them, but then when it comes to down to day of event sort of supervision, we're the ones um, that are doing it and doing all the check-in on special events. Rec, recreational program. Um, so our, our, our objective here, we are always striving to provide a lifelong opportunities for all individuals, regardless of social economic stand, uh, status. So our programming services have a wide range from, from pre-K all the way through senior programming. But to touch on the few general areas, we do adult programming, we do adaptive programs, performing art, arts out of junior theater, uh, garden and nature programs, primarily out of Vandeveer. Uh, we have our athletics um, and aquatics areas, uh, special events, the AmeriCorps program, which is 
I don't think it's as much uh, pub as it should. Um, we are the largest AmeriCorps grant in the state. Um, we have nearly 98 or so AmeriCorps positions that we fund through this grant that we manage. And, and not only the bulk of those are, are really help to facilitate other nonprofits like Big Brothers, Big Scissors, Big Sisters, and then <laughs> the Stepping Stones after school program with the school district. But Teresa and, and Jess and, and Marie and a couple others really spend a lot of time managing that program. So it, it is very time consuming for our operations. Um, Youth Corps is, you know, a subsidiary of the AmeriCorps program. And then the Stepping Stones program, we, we, we are responsible for hiring the uh, staff that uh, run the program for the school district. So uh, that is the recreational area. Um, backing up one thing to touch on, uh, numbers have, have grown. We average about 720 or so programs annually with around 14,000 participation participants. We had a little dip, obviously, with COVID, but I was pleasantly surprised that it didn't fall off as much as we had thought. Uh, for FY20, we dropped to about 541 programs, but still maintained about 12,000 participants. So given all the closures and everything we had to go through, um, I, was, you know, I was very pleased that we were able to stay relevant. And a lot of that, our, our team was um, savvy and, and you know, modified to the virtual offerings where they could. And the prime example with that is junior theater. Uh, junior theater was able to basically continue most of their different type of classes virtually. Uh, main stage performances obviously didn't happen, but um, we, we and hopefully you saw on our Facebook page a couple weeks back, we did a post where about the national reach of junior theater. I mean, we, we touched, people that had registered for us in, in nearly all the states um, as far as Calif from California to Kentucky to Florida. I mean, we're getting people um, registering for our virtual junior theater programs. Um, and that's just fantastic to have that little, that natural, national reach. Revenue facilities. So Troy Evans, uh, sees our operations over this. Uh, this is our golf and our river's edge. So as a refresher, these are enterprise funds. They are designed to operate based on revenue. Uh, their expenses are, are covered directly through revenue. Um, obviously with the uh, issues uh, with, with revenue with river's edge, there's been some, some general fund transfers over the last couple of years to help float that or to make that budget whole. Um, Golf uh, generally covers itself amongst the three courses, but what we always talk about is that EMICE generally operates significantly ahead, Duck Creek breaks even, and Red Hawk operates under, uh, under uh, revenues. Uh, but as a whole, the golf um, is, is sustain, sustains itself. Um, and on the golf note, I mentioned earlier, you know, the one of the big positives out of COVID is that golf uh, took off and we are actually up 6,000 rounds this year, um, which is substantial. We do about 5,000 or 50,000 plus rounds a year. So that's about a 10% increase, uh, which is pretty good for a single golf year. So hopefully that trajectory stays on that upward path with golf. Um, so some of the frequently asked questions we get, and we get some of these from you guys from time to time as well, but uh, when will my park get mowed? Um, this one is one of Betsy's favorites. Um, generally, we are on a 10-day mowing cycle, um, uh, but in, in recent um, change in operations, when we went to our districting format, we've been able to bring that down to about a seven day uh, turnaround, which is good. So that's that's an efficiency improvement. We're, we're getting to the parks more frequently to mow and keeping them mowed. Uh, we get a lot of questions about areas that may not get mowed, our low mow or no mow areas. And uh, the thing to iterate here is that generally we'll identify areas that may not have a recreational 
active area of a park um, or if the slope or terrain like the issue with uh, Prospect Terrace Park we went through um, don't allow for us to get equipment to it um, then we will we will naturalize uh, the other point in doing that is also to obviously help staff time and budget time if, if there's areas that can not be mowed as frequently or naturalized. Um, it obviously helps save on our, our cost and time um, to do that. Um, and then lastly, it's 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 good practice in areas, um, and I'm sure Bob could attest as far as uh, water quality and, and, and pollinators and all that um, the, to help have those in our park system to help um, with those natural those natural occurrences. Can a can ATVs or motorized vehicles be used in parks or on the trails? Simple answer is no. Um, we I get probably weekly emails about our trails. Our trails are are probably one of our more um, popular discussion areas. Um, particularly the Riverfront Trail and the Duck Creek Trail, um, heavily used, especially now during COVID. It's an opportunity for people to get out and, and exercise and be outside. Um, unfortunately, we do have people who, and I know Maureen and I have talked about motorized users at Slattery Park. Um, we do have signage posted, and this is one of those sort of uh, enforcement challenges, right? You know, it's a, it's a mini mile surface and, and motorized vehicles can go fast and get away, but we do our best to try to, you know, let the public know that motorized vehicles are not allowed on our trails um, in any way, and then PD helps us, police department helps us with enforcement where, when and where they can. Um, you, we are working on a new share the trail uh, project because um, we are seeing increased use, particularly in bicycles um, on our trails. And, and we've had some near calls with, with bicyclists and, and walkers and not, you know, announcing themselves as they pass and that type of stuff. So we, we're going to put out some additional signage and, and we're going to ask staff to be more, you know, visually you know when they see that to try to address it um and i'm i'm hoping the mayor actually he's agreed to do a, a psa on the topic with us so um where that's in in development now um and then what improvements can we expect at the golf courses this year so the big one we're trying to really push forward from the CIP standpoint is a clubhouse renovations, particularly at EMICE. We've done some forward T work and we'll continue that. And then the other area is uh, continuous cart pass. Um, those are really critical for us being able to stay open more during inclement weather and, and, and have the golf courses available. Um, so those are a couple uh, items as well as a maintenance facility at EMICE. Uh, who maintains the rec trail? So uh, and, and the trail map system, uh, we get a lot of questions about trails and, and it's a it's a shared departmental um, operation. So the way I can best explain how trails function in Davenport is that the engineering and, and, and um, planning portion of public works, they're really tasked with the design and, and large trail connections. So when we talk about the Go Davenport plan mm -hmm. and funding that and getting our trail system connected, that starts out at public works. Uh, we play a role in that, but it really starts with that plan and, uh, and the engineers prioritizing as well as council where those connections get prioritized. Our role really comes down to once the trail's built, the routine maintenance, right? So we are the ones that are, Betsy's crews are the ones that are out cleaning the trails, removing debris, picking up garbage, snow removal, that type of stuff. We do do some routine repairs, small repairs, um, but if, if it's a large sectional repair or uh, anything of that nature, that's going to go up to public works because it's more than likely going to be contracted out um, to get that done. Uh, trail map, we always get that question. So that's up there. 
qctrails.com uh, or friends of offroad cycling fork.com uh, both have trails trail maps available and uh, i sort of touched on the last question will, will the rec trail be connected to my neighborhood and really the go davenport plan has the prioritization and it's just a matter of funding um, a lot of it we're trying to accomplish through trying to couple it with grants that are available along with CIP dollars. Um, but it, it, it's, it's a prioritization like any other project um, that council goes through. Um, I think the more the public demands trail um, connections, the more we'll see it happen. Uh, just like your city streets or public safety, you know, the more the public has a, a need and a demand, um, those things tend to get move up the priority list. This is a long, long list and I'm not gonna read it all, but this is all the different partners we work with. Um, you know, everything from our friends groups, friends of Andavir, friends of Credit Island, friends of Off-Road Racing, to the Davenport School District, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, to name a few. Um, but as you can see, we, we have lots of partnerships in all the multitude of areas that we work and cover. So we're thankful for our partners. Um, we continue to look for additional partnerships, um, but these are the broad list of everybody we partner with. Um, and lastly, just work plan update. Um, the city administrator has a council set work plan that has five pillars. Um, we've had two projects in recent that have been in that, and that's Gabe's Inclusive Playground at Vandeveer and then the Miracle Field. As of today, I'm happy to report both of those are complete and open. Um, and just to touch briefly on the Gabe's, we'll be doing our, as a reminder, we'll be doing the dedication this Thursday um, at 4 p.m. Um, so, uh, if you haven't checked out that playground yet, I encourage you to get up there and take a look at it. It's, it's really quite impressive. It, it's our first all inclusive play piece in the city. So that is all I have. Any questions? Oh, yep. I had, um, just one question on the golf. I know we had, um, I can't remember what the last update was on the cosmic golf equipment that was purchased. Was that... Could, did we get any use of that? No. Season? So we have the equipment. We have just because of the social distancing and COVID and all that, the way that we just haven't felt comfortable yet sure. to roll that out. Um, more likely we'll have it this next spring um, just because the whole idea behind it is socialization. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Thank you. That's a lot of information for us, but it's good to have a review again. You know, we do the budget and very often not totally connected with how it goes. So um, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we have now in um, our time limits here are going down. Um, are there other uh, components of your report, Chad? It says verbal report under a staff report yeah. that you would like to share? Yeah, just two, two, three things really quick. Just an update on the master plan. Um, we've the, our consultant has completed the inventory phase and, and is compiling that data. We hope to have the, the public input, the social pinpoint platform rolled out here in the next couple weeks. Um, so that's moving along. Jersey Farms Park, the bids for construction are due this Friday. Um, it's unlikely at this point that we'll see any fall construction, but they may wish to mobilize and do some grading work to kick off that project. Uh, but more than likely will be completed in the spring. And then River West, um, the planning process that uh, sort of uh, has been the morphing of the Credit Island subcommittee into Riverfront Improvements River West. They held their second meeting this past week or last week. Um, they have one more meeting scheduled, but I, I think a lot of good input has come out. Um, we, I'm looking to get those meeting notes summary and I'll send that out to all of you guys as soon as I have that. But uh, with that, and I don't know if we may want to consider because I believe the Credit Island subcommittee is still sort of standing. Um, I don't know, Credit Island? 
Did we vote to close that one? I thought no, we closed we Prospect Terrace. We, didn't we have not Credit closed um, the current subcommittee under Credit Island, correct? That's what we understand. So the, the question is, um, to me, because I was going to ask that question, um, River West, is that going to continue, or is that just a very short... Um, well, I, I, they have one more meeting planned, and then I think they'll have it at that point. Uh, and I don't know Jerry's been involved; he could he could certainly comment. But I think the idea is to at least have their draft recommendations done. And the way they focus that planning process is that the 13, 14 mile sort of section of riverfront has been divided into three areas. So Upper River West, Middle River West, Lower Mi River West. Middle River West is exclusively Credit Island recommendations. So at least in my mind, that sort of the function of what the Credit Island subcommittee was doing on our end is going to be expressed in the recommendations. At least, Jerry, I don't know if you would concur with that or not, um, but I think it's being sort of tackled through that. Uh, that area starts at Marquette and goes all the way down to the city limits. That's and those three of those three sections. And not only on Credit Island, but over on Harbor Ranch Road, on the other side of that uh, lagoon, and that includes all that back area over in there. So just. But the main focus basically is to connect that from the, with the river commission down here in the river. So that way we can connect and keep on going west and, and make improvements. So what in the meeting, what they've done is they've come up with a lot of ideas, a lot of priorities and not only for structure, but um, for people to understand what Credit Island and that whole area, West area is. So, uh, because right now that even includes the marsh area down there. And there's a lot of things going back and forth that uh, I, I've heard were put the marsh area and Credit Island, which I don't think that's a good idea, but anyway, that's, that's, there's things like that, but it, that includes that whole area. So. These meetings have really basically come up with a lot of great ideas from a lot of great people that's really put in their, uh, their information. And so they're compiling that. And Steve Aaron, Steve Aaron's is kind of, kind of a ramrod in that, isn't it correct? And Kevin James. So they're kind of putting that thing together. So that's kind of what's going on down there with that. Thank you. Um, Whoops. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I just wanted to let Chad know that I'm teaching classes on Tuesday and Thursday nights. That's why I can't make that River West. And that's why I can't make Gabe's Playground this week. I, I teach at Scott Community College. Secondly, on these huge piles of uh, mulch at, at our parks, I know it was a, you know, an emergency. Uh, have they, anybody, can anybody just come load up a pickup or is there rules? Are there rules about that, or or what? What's the decision? So no, they do not recommend that citizens take piles out of that mulch. They are working on getting a contractor to come in to remove those piles as soon as possible. Oh, okay, I just wondered if they could use it for any nature trails, and if you know anywhere, can it could be used for anything like that? Any landscaping, or is it just got contaminants in it? It is not recommended for home use for a variety of reasons. They have given parks permission to use it around bowl, uh, bollards, you know, some basic use like that if, if we need it. But it is absolutely not recommended for home use due to, as you said, the contaminants that could potentially be in it. I have uh, to make a comment to get us back on track before we close or work with. Um, in regard to... Um, River West, I right now feel that it would be great to have a commitment by one of the current board members to at least report back 
and have that as a report back in the upcoming meetings since there's still planning in place. And I also, now after hearing what kind of is evolving regarding Credit Island, I'm wondering not to just hold on doing any suspension of the subcommittee, that it just be defunct right now, not in action. And then, um, depending upon what evolves, it may or may not have a place or become totally a part of uh, River West. Uh, comments on that. I know that you might have another topic, but, but let's finish that up. Just some quick comments on where we might go with that. That's what I'm seeing as um, some possibility. Um, take it. Do we need a nomination process for that liaison, or, or what are you? Uh, what are you I think if someone could just step up informally I, at this point, because if we I have would a nomination, Jerry. huh? I would nominate Jerry if there was a nomination process. Oh, you mean for the? <laughs> just represent, be be someone who regularly attends right now and reports back because it's still evolving. Or Chad has a comment. Well, just so you know, Jerry, Richard although Richard's schedule has changed, and Michael, and then Tegan was, those are the four that have been part of the River West planning process. So, I mean, any one of you could certainly I comment, or we could just put it as a bulleted item under staff reports, and we can it, fill you in. It depends when they're going to, you know, right now Steve Aarons has got them on Thursday nights. I just can't, I can't do it. Um, as far as our subcommittee, I think what you said, let's just table it. Let's just... Put it on idle until we see what what shakes out here. Um, you know, if I have I, I have no problem with that. Okay, I have heads nodding. I I see that as a uh, as the good solution at this point. Let's say yes, nod heads or say yes. Uh, good good idea. Thanks, Jerry. Oh, I was just going to say that Chad could put that on his agenda uh, as you every time, and, and then we can make comments of other things, that we, just like what we just did today. Yeah, I, think I mean, I good. attend all those meetings, and, and there's a lot more that that can come from that and a lot of information. And, and I, I, I think the main thing we want to do is we really want to make sure that we're getting connected all along the whole river. That's what we're trying to do. That's where we initiated in the first place. So, because we were kind of lost down in the West, and now it's in there, and mm -hmm. and now it's going to come out to be something. How long ago that'll be? I have no idea, but at least we recognize it, and we want the city to recognize at Credit Island that there's a lot down there that can be um, for the benefits of the city of Davenport and the Quad Cities, for that matter. Thanks. Um, where are we now? We've Chad, other remarks on your verbal report? I have nothing else, and okay, staff's great. reports are in your packet unless you guys have individual questions. We have nothing else. Way out yonder is Michael. Michael, are you still there? Mike, are you still there? Oh. Hello, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What what we he was going to I'm still here. I just couldn't get it turned back okay. on. Okay. Now is the time for the Riverfront Improvement Commission update and also I don't um, we would then move right into advisory time and did we answer your question in regard to the timeline on the master plan? So maybe you could comment with both because I didn't want to miss that request of yours. So first, what is oh, happening? Riverfront Commission pretty well. Oh, you ready? Okay. Uh -huh. Riverfront Commission pretty well was all housekeeping, uh, rents, and all that type of thing going on, um, and some of the planning. So there really wasn't much to report back to Parks and Rec, and the uh, Riverfront planning. Jerry talking about we can easily report give a report every month on that because okay. right now we've had lots and lots of ideas and they're kind of uh, condensing it so it's not so overwhelming. So we'll all be glad to report on that. That'll be fine. That's great. So did we answer your question in regard to plan of work? Um, I know that you sent me um, a message and 
he, your oh, recommendation yeah. was, you know, where, where is the um, input on um, the trail system, how it fits into the, the, the master plan? You know, is there a separate component? I think you see. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. That's fine. I appreciate it. Okay. And I don't like doing remote. This is like being a ghost, so I will be there <laughs> next time. I'll tell you. We didn't miss you. I mean, we don't see you, but we knew you were there all along. Um, yeah, great. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, his comment was, I'm interested particularly because I want them to look at our, our recreational trails and specifically noting the worsening conditions of the ones that we might have. That's kind of part of what he was asking about as that assessment is taking place. So anything about that other than just noting it? Yeah, the, the trails assessment was handled in the Go Davenport plan. Okay. And we the talk Parks Master Plan, the, the, they they're not inventory in our complete trail system because okay. that was already done. But they're going they're going to be looking at the Go Davenport plan to kind of Right, they'll at review that other planning processes okay. that the city has undertaken. Okay. I'll ask the question, how familiar are you with the Go Davenport trail system and plan? Show of hands. Great. You no, know, that's it'll be fun someday if they interconnect and we can Yeah. Well we talked about maybe at the November meeting if our agenda allows is to at least re-expose us to the plan with the key components that reflect with budget. And, and so we see that as part of the master plan, maybe just updating. So keep that in mind for next month. Good. Thanks, Mike. Any other things for the good of the cause under um, advisory time? Uh, hearing nothing or seeing no uh, requests for talking um, and explaining or um, sharing, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Um, all in favor, indicate with an aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Thank you so much. This is good. My head is swimming. <laughs> this has been overwhelming and a great, a great information piece today. Thank you.